name is John Decker, and I'm from BoardWorks Education, and I am sat here in suburban Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And this has been quite an interesting time. And I know what we do at BoardWorks, we can speak directly to that teacher support. Because if this kind of COVID learning period has taught us anything, it's that tech use is not going away. It's only going to accelerate. And teachers need to be ready to pivot and provide effective instruction throughout any modality, whether that's face-to-face, -face, whether that's blended or hybrid, or students are completely remote. And how we speak to that is BoardWorks is just content. Everything I'm going to show you today is intentionally simple. It's K-12 through teaching content for classroom technology. And how that looks is a teacher has access to a library of 25,000 plus slides in your core content areas, K through 12, math, science, ELA, and history. And the goal is specifically to enhance teaching and learning, but from the teacher empowerment angle. So we wanna empower every teacher to engage students and improve learning across every educational environment. So just like I said, any modality. And when you empower teachers to engage students and enhance learning, we can keep teachers teaching from anywhere at any time. We have been hands-on with schools across the United States. Over these past you know, five, six months or so, our schools have learned to pivot to keep teachers in the driving seat in terms of instruction. So no, ma no matter where they have to go, they can keep resourcing their learners. And how we help schools is also very intentional and simple. Every school has a technology now in hand, and if they don't have it, they have it on order and it's back ordered. We optimize the effective use of instructional technology and we enhance learning from anywhere at any time. So when I say we optimize the effective use, just think about how you see technology used in your school. Sometimes is it used effectively, sometimes is a screen or a computer just used as a glorified whiteboard or a place for a document to be held. How we get to that effective use is we provide engaging blended opportunities throughout our K-12 platform of interactive activities. That's how we lean on that 25,000 slides of interactive content and we give every teacher's access to that content for greater consistency. So, so many schools deal with the issue of pockets of really engaging tech use and then other teachers who are much more comfortable with just direct instruction only. Well, now in this timing and moving forward, we don't really have that option anymore. We need to be ready to move wherever instruction needs to go and giving teachers access to all of the content K through 12 can be your answer to greater consistency. But think about how we resource our students who might be English, English lang language learners, special education learners, gifted and talented, alternative ed, you know, for some RTI, if you have an MTSS system in some of your schools, you can customize BoardWorks content for the needs of your learners. You can edit it. You can blend it with other resources or assessment tools. And finally, we're designed by teachers intentionally with simple implementation and ease of use in mind. There isn't a large uptime in training. It's turnkey and it's ready to go. So whether you're a tech savvy teacher or you're tech resistant, very confident that with a few minutes in training, you can use BoardWorks as an, uh, to an effective level. And just some of the ways that we're really targeting implementing BoardWorks with schools and focusing our trainings lately for remediation and learning support. Think about how you currently do that. Obviously with remote learning, fantastic tool to push these resources to any device, whether that's a Chromebook, uh, iPhone, iPad, Android tablet, anything like that. If you have teachers who are new, so they might have the tech knowledge, they don't have the pedagogy piece, we can help support that with our teacher's notes and our lessons plans. If you have teachers who are teaching multiple grades in different subjects, English language learners, flipping your classroom, Synchronous and asynchronous teaching have become huge touch points right now, and we can certainly speak to those. For special education teachers, we're a fantastic resource to lean on. And I'm gonna just quickly show you what BoardWorks looks like because the platform is totally secure. And as I pull up my browser, you're gonna notice I'm in an international demo account. We have no student logins, and I'm gonna repeat that, no student logins. So you might've seen me just switch my screen and I have three kids on my screen. And here in the United States and in my state of Pennsylvania, our state shut down March 12th. So my kids were at home, they were on devices, and we're trying to figure out this remote learning. And one of the banes of my existence, because I was home every day working, was, Dad, I forgot my password. Well, BoardWorks 
requires no student passwords. So you don't have the messy business of trying to remember those for multiple children. You also, you have the security of collecting no student data. Students have access to the presentations, but only as the teacher directed. And when I log in as a teacher, what you're gonna see in front of you is simply content. It's content areas, and each content area is full of interactive lessons that are pre-built and ready to go. How you get to those is pretty interesting. You can use this global search bar. It's like a Google search, search bar. You can search by keyword. So if I want to search rocks or I want to search writing or graphs, the relevant presentations across K-12 will come up. When I click into a content area, what you're going to see is your standards on the left, another search bar so that you can search by keyword within that content area. And then as you scroll through, you see the presentations in alphabetical order. Now we are an interactive supplement tool. We're not the be all end all, end all but we are quite comprehensive. We usually cover about 80 to 90% 90, 90 of standards. You can search by keyword, you can search alphabeti alphabetically, or you can search by standard and then substandard and the relevant presentations will populate. And I'm just going to pull up a sampling of our presentations because I want to show you some of the options because we're a great resource for face to face, whether students are, you know, in class or they're hybrid on a B schedule or they're completely remote. How we give the teacher those options is right here. So let's say I want to go into linear graphs. You see, I have some buttons at the bottom and it's going to do me well to explain what they mean. Play obviously means we're going to play the presentation. Then I have a couple share buttons, I can direct how I share them, which I'm going to show you in a moment, or I can save the presentation because we give every teacher the ability to create their own customized library without ever ruining the master copy of the presentation. Let's look at what the play button does because I'm going to go into that presentation and I'm going to show you how we can use this face to face or even do a screen recording using some free tools so we can do some asynchronous teaching. So if I hit that play button, you're going to notice linear graphs opens up in a familiar slideshow format. So if I go into this presentation, let me slide this over here. You're going to see this is 32 slides of content. Hopefully most teachers are familiar with operating a slideshow. Again, this works on any device in the classroom. We can also push it, push this to any screen. And the focus is that engaging interactive content. So just think about how you would teach or how your teachers will currently teach the change in the X versus the change in Y and how this could help because now I can manipulate this 365 degrees. I can uncover these post-it notes so I can see this learning right here. I don't just have one problem, but I'm able to differentiate as often as I want for one learner, for the needs of all my learners. I can bring students to the board when we're allowed to do that again and that natural teaching pedagogy is built in. So you're gonna see slides of interactivity, slides that I can give my students, slides that are gonna show the concepts. You see everything is responding right here in the screen for that visual learning piece. Teachers aren't having to reinvent the wheel to create the content. And then these fantastic slides of supportive text. But if I hit this button on the side, what you're gonna see and Algebra 1 here is true for elementary school ELA or middle school science, all of our content areas, you're going to see supportive teacher's notes, really lesson plans to complement every slide, every content area, because we are a teacher support tool. We don't want to supersede anything teachers do. We don't want to supplant it, but we want to give them a fantastic interactive support and the tools that they need to do it really well. What you're also going to see throughout all of our presentations is built-in checks for understanding along the way. So this presentation is 32 slides. Realistically, if I'm teaching this, I'm not going through 32 slides at a time. I might break up this presentation into five or six slides at a time for my direct instruction piece. But I need to check in with my students to see where they're at. And how I do that is just like that. This is the length this equation with its slope and y-intercept. When it's right, it's green. When it's wrong, it's red. Full disclosure, I got that right by accident. I'll get this one wrong, it's red. But I can solve, everything snaps into place. I can also refresh for infinite opportunities. And right now, I'm just kind of showing you way one that I share this, where I'm in front of the classroom or I'm using a screen recording tool to keep my voice over top, and then I can share that link through any learning management or VLE system. 
So that's just kind of an eyes on what we look like in Algebra 1. And we're doing that by just the play button. But BoardWorks is full of content. Like I said, 25,000 plus slides of content. And how do we get this in front of students if we're doing some you know, synchronous learning? How do we do that? Let me just go into middle school science and I'll show you kind of way too that we can share these with our students, but specifically keep your teachers teaching in a remote environment. So you're going to notice I'm going to go to heat transfer. One of the hardest things we hear from teachers is how do we do some virtual lab opportunities in this remote learning world? Well, we can certainly help with that. So you saw the play button right there. Now we're going to see a live session. A live session is that synchronous learning piece. It's completely secure, but it allows me, when I click this button, a presentation code appears. It's unique. It's generated every time I hit that button. And when students enter this code on the BoardWorks website and I hit join lesson, they have access to the presentation. But I, as the teacher, I'm in control of the pacing. They get all the interactive benefits. So I can stay teaching in a remote environment. If you want to incorporate this into a VLE or a learning management system, we make it really easy for your teachers, astonishingly easy. So see how I do this. I'm going to hit copy. If most of your teachers are comfortable with a copy and paste, they can use BoardWorks. I hit copy. I'm going to go to my Google Classroom. You might not use this. You might use your own VLEs. We work with every learning management system. All I do is hit paste. When I hit paste and I post this for my students, they're going to see the presentation name, the code, but they're going to get a hyperlink. When they paste this code into the presentation, I join it with them and I am walking them through this virtual lesson. So when I change the progress bar, it changes on their screen, whether they're right in front of me or they're 6,000 miles away. And what we're going to show you in science here, this is middle school level, so, you know, grade seven, grade eight. We start with this great reflection question. Can you design an experiment to investigate how well different materials conduct heat? Well, this is a great lesson right here because I'm going to show my learners the materials and I'm going to get their feedback. I can also click my teacher's notes and I can see planning and carrying out investigations. This is some of the questions I can, I can ask them. It shows me that I have a worksheet available so I can post the worksheet to them. They don't see the teacher's notes, only I see them. But when we get to this screen, each student, whether I'm instructing 50 students or one student remotely, they have access to this virtual lab right here. They have access to all the results. But when I hit this progress bar, everything changes on their side. So I can actually check in, I can get feedback, get understanding, but I remain teaching virtually. That's way too to use BoardWorks. So I'm finding a presentation, I've played it, now I've done some synchronous learning without the students ever having to log in, not collecting their data, completely secure. Let's look at way three, how I would give a student a presentation, maybe for their own practice. What we're addressing a lot right now in the United States is trying to get a handle on some learning gaps. We all know that remote learning, if your students have had to pivot to that, that's not an equitable solution for every student. So the, the situation that my children have weren't the same distance learning solution as the students had down the road. So realistically, we're going to have to assess and address learning gaps. And we're a fantastic tool to respond to those learning gaps. One of the ways I could do that as a teacher is I could say, you know what? Uh, I teach linear graphs virtually to my learners, and I realize that some of my students were deficient. Well, that same teacher has access to middle school math. They have access to lower and higher level content. I can go just into middle school math, and I can say, for three of my students, I notice that they need some remediation, just some practice on their own. I'm going to keyword search linear, and I'm going to go into linear functions on the middle school level, and I'm going to send this out as a student session. You might wonder, okay, what is a student session? exactly what it sounds like. It is a self-paced practice session. I can give it to my students to maybe prepare them for an assessment or to go back and hit some concepts that they need to learn. And I share it to them the same way as I did the live session. I hit the student session. It generates a unique code. I can have them enter the code if I'm showing this to them. The easiest way I can do it is I can just hit copy 
and I can paste that into an email, into a chat bar. I can paste that into any VLE, and they have access to go through this linear functions on their own pacing. Hopefully that, that makes sense to everybody, that I can direct any presentation I want to be face-to-face, -face, synchronous, whether that's remote or in front of me, or I can direct any presentation to be self-paced for my learners for their own practice. The last thing I want to show you is how do I get into content and make it my own? Well, we certainly give teachers the ability to do that. And I'm going to show you from the elementary level. We have fantastic content that's interactive throughout any grade level. So this is just a sampling of, you know, elementary age reading multimedia. And what you're going to notice that has audio here, we're going to read poems. It's going to read to the learner. You're going to have text that they can click and look at. They're going to get poem activities. But let's say I wanted to take this presentation and I wanted to edit it. So I'm going to go into reading multimedia and I'm going to save it because I want to add some of my own slides or my own content. I'm just going to call it reading one. And teachers can do this an infinite amount of times for their own library, but the master presentation stays there. And I go into my library and I say, OK, here's my reading one. I'm going to edit this presentation. Maybe I edit it because I don't want to use all the slides that day. Or I want to send just a few slides to my learners for their own practice. So I can hide a slide. I can reorder a slide. I can also add any slide I want. So if I want to add content from across the internet, if I want to add a video in, I can do that, a picture, a table. If I want to add text, or if I want to add a hyperlink. So if I want to link out to an assessment, I can certainly do that. I can edit this presentation, and then I can direct the pacing to my learners. So I'm using BoardWorks as my fantastic content base. I'm editing it, editing it to respond to the needs of my learners, and then I'm controlling the pacing for my learners. So I can send it out as a student session, as a live session, if I put an assessment in there, I can collect some data with, with still being secure. Another thing I can do is I can save this to my school library. So teachers can begin to collaborate on content, edit it and make it their own so they can create a curriculum spine using BoardWorks across a school. So just to kind of round back to what we just did, we looked at BoardWorks, it's interactive content in every core area, K through 12, 25,000 plus slides right at a te teacher's fingertips. It's ready to go. They can control the pace, whether they're teaching in front of the classroom, synchronously, asynchronously. The content is available for them and they're ready to pivot. They can create customized libraries. We do give administrators an extra ability to see how teachers are interfacing with the product. And I'll just show you the way that looks. Right now, I'm at BoardWorks login page. I'll just reiterate, no student logins. If I log in as an administrator, what you're going to see is the ability to add users, to delete users, and to gain analytics. When you gain analytics, what you do is you select a date range, you hit search, and you get to see a school analysis. How are teachers and learners interfacing with this platform? From a return on investment standpoint, this could be really valuable. From a teacher support standpoint, this could be really valuable. You can see which presentations they're sharing, how many student views there have been. If you break it down by school, you can see which teachers are using the platform from any date range. And this is one of the ways that we give you return on investment, but also from the support side, know that you're getting excellent support for your teachers.